Hey everyone, Sam McKay here from Enterprise DNA. I just want to do a quick video here on variables and why they are such a crucial part of writing intuitive formulas inside of Power BI. Now, this uh, this is this is uh, a reasonably complex formula that I took out uh, that I'm showcasing here, which was from a recent. Um, member only event for for enter, from enterprise dna about project management and so i had a i had some uh, i created this really unique gantt chart from a matrix visual it had a little, lot of logic embedded into it things like you know um when a project started when it ended but also you'll see here that there's some different coloring here and this was based upon trying to trying to showcase uh, to completion so if i come back and i have a look or just do i'll just do a quick view of the data You'll see here that there's a column here which says, and this is all the information I've got by the way. There's a, I just have start and end date for every single task in a particular project, but I have completion, and so that um, brought in a lot of complexity to my um, my formula, trying to work out, okay, so how do I visually show where we are to completion in, inside of a visual like this? And then I also needed to create uh, a number of different um, colors in my chart for different task categories in each different project. So, and, and I ended up using conditional formatting uh, within my matrix to actually make that all happen. Okay, now, but the, the key thing here is I wanna just, just, just run through why you need to use variables here and how I've used them to actually make this work okay so regardless of like what the calculation actually is I just want to show you the setup that you should aim for if you aren't using variables much at the moment because I still do do see especially in the um, enterprise DNA support forum I do still see very complex formulas that could and should be broken up by variables. Okay, so what I've what I've actually done here, and this is quite cool, but with variables, is you can actually reference uh, variables within variables, and so you can actually build up a lot of your calculation before you actually have to enter anything into the return here. Okay, and so what I've done is I've gone variable, you know, and I'm just considering the context I am in for every individual result because you've got to remember that any every individual result is calculated individually in Power BI. And so I've just gone current day, project days, days from start date. Then you see here I've referenced my days from end date, which is basically just referencing this and this, so these two. Then I've gone and done some further logic where I've gone progress color, completion of the project, I've gone and grabbed that percentage completion. And then again, I've just referenced variables inside of variables. And then what I've done, and check this out, you can also embed true-false logic inside a variable. So you don't only, you not only can you embed like say a scalar value, so like a numeric value, you can also um, run a true-false um, piece of logic, um, and you can also run, uh, create, put tables inside of variables as well, virtual tables inside of variables. But I haven't needed to in this case. So instead of having um, like crazy big if statements down here which I see a lot, I've, cr I've placed the if, like sort of the, the true false logic where I've got the and inside a variable. And so I've said to completion logic and max days greater than or equal to, uh, max days less than or equal to, so on and so forth. And then you'll see here when I've entered it into my switch here, which is basically like a better way to write if statements, I've, I've embedded an if statement and another if statement inside a switch statement but I've made it far easier to understand because the logic is actually written once in a variable versus referenced you know seven times down this particular list okay so I know a lot of you may be thinking like you talk that I talk about this concept called measure branching a lot well the reason why I haven't done as much measure branching in this particular case is because a lot of this logic within here is is purely just for this one calculation. It's not like that globally reusable throughout the rest of my model. And so in this particular case, and this is something I've started doing a lot more recently, I thought, well, it's better just to put it as a variable inside the one formula where you actually use it versus, you know, having it um, taking up a lot of room inside of your, say, measure groups, for example. And so because it is so locally um, uh, yeah, to, to, it is local to just this calculation. I decided to place all of these things inside of variables and create one, you know, one um, intuitive formula 
that, that works it all out. Now, I didn't just build this from scratch, by the way. I did originally have these in measures to just make sure that, that I was calculating the correct um, results at each different context, right? So, you know, I did have it separated out previously, but then I thought, okay, well, I'll clean it up and I'll just put some of the, um, you know, uh, things that only reference here into variables and then build it up within this one particular measure. So in terms of the syntax, you know, you've got your variables up here, then you just have to go return and then you can enter your logic logic down there. And so I really recommend this a lot now, you know, in terms of building out these particular um, uh, particular formulas. But one, one thing I do want to add though before rounding off is say for instance you're not understanding the numbers that you are receiving when you go and write formulas, advanced formulas like this. You have to break it out first, okay? You've got to break down, you've got to understand what each individual result is actually calculating, which each what each individual variable is calculating. Because there's no way to audit these within your measure this measure. There's no way to audit each individual row here other than running um, you know, other than creating a separate measure or just work, um, placing the variable name below return and, and, and not allowing any other calculations to occur. So you got to understand each individual variable if you aren't getting the end answer that you thought you would get. Okay, so because the reason I say this is because a lot of forum questions I see, people just, uh, a lot of members especially, are just placing these formulas with variables in them and, and saying, oh, what's going on? And it's, I mean, it's difficult for anyone answering that to really understand because you've got to understand what each individual variable is calculated. So, so that's an important, um, you know, important consideration uh, if you're not getting things adding up as they should. Okay, just a quick overview uh, there for me. Um, you know, I really, um, there's a big recommendation for me now. So hopefully, hopefully you can, um, you know, take take my uh, advice and, and implement it where it seems logical for you. Okay, if, uh, if you've got a lot out of this one, definitely throw the video a like. Always appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Okay, all the best.